Thanks for watching this episode of The Blade Boys. I'm Ted Flett. And I'm Ith Das. And we're going to do a combo episode now. And a little double header. A double header. It's big, it's fast, it's furious. It's pairs. Um, it, we're going to talk about pairs. If you're a couple, we're talking about we're you. We're talking about you. <laughs> we're talking pairs, we're talking ice dance at the Andres Napala Finlandia and 2015 uh, Autumn Classic. So it was like a Russian bonanza at Andres Napala. Yes, yep. Uh, what did you think of the competition, Myth? Well, you know, um, the Russians swept the podium. I mean, technically, I guess they swept three and a half places if you count Ilya Shechkina and Moscovich. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Right? There are Russians everywhere, even, even not representing Russia. <laughs> like, they're still winning. <laughs> that they is how good they are. <laughs> Russia is taking over, as usual. They are taking over. And um, this was a wacky competition because, I mean... Everyone expected Stolbo and Klimov in their comeback to like easily win this competition. And they did win this competition fairly comfortably. But the notable thing was that they got beat in each segment by like second tier Russian teams, Astakova and Roganov, and um, Tarasova and Morozov. That would be Evgenia and uh, not uh, Tatiana Tarasova. <laughs> <laughs> and not Nikolai, Nikolai Morozov. Morozov. All, yeah, although t watching Tatiana Tarasova and Nikolai Morozov do like a pairs routine would kind of make my life, right? Yeah. Yeah, it would be everything. Oh they, my God. All they'd have to do is, they would just have to throw their boots on the ice and it would be like, yep, tens. Tens oh on God. program components across the board. Her fur coat would be so icy after that death spiral, <laughs> right? Like it would just be, it would be like a damn Swiffer on, on the ice. Like, <laughs> that is... Anyways, we will we will leave that to our imagination her, 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 and your your yeah, imagination. Her hair is not aerodynamic enough to do to do those jumps. I think she'd probably only get a double. Uh, yeah, I mean. But anyways, on to the competition. On to the competition. Um, Tarasova and Morozov, uh, they had a really good short program. Uh, I mean, not their best short program, but still good enough to uh, beat uh, Sobova and Klimov. Uh, and then Asagova and Roganov had a very good uh, free program uh, where they also beat Sobova and Klimov. And they were, they were party poopers because Sobova and Klimov, they, as, as everyone knows, they missed Worlds last season in an effort to sort of um, like kind of up their technical game and kind of show everyone like, hey, we can, we can do harder jumps than side-by-side -side double axles and we can... Uh, we can do harder throws and stuff like that. Uh, and, and they did that. I mean, they did side-by-side -side triple Zao cows in the free skate. Uh, unfortunately, they had problems in their short program. And, uh, I mean, sh she was glaring at him at uh, Euros after his little... Hello. Tum after his tumble. But he could have pulled out a Barbara Fruiser Poli level glare at this competition because, unfortunately, unfortunately Senya went down in uh, the short program on the triple let's throw and um in the free program they also had a lot of issues she uh missed the second triple toe on on their combo which he's like he actually like nailed it pretty well but the biggest issue with uh this team is that i think they lack the fire and connection that they had in sochi i mean there's there's this kind of aloofness to them that like again, like you, we were, we had talked in one of the previous in our preseason episode about like I don't know like are they gonna still like each other and like yeah. there's something there's something there's this awkward there's this tension and awkwardness that you see with them and normally this team is known for like having great personality type programs and like Adam's Family and even Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon like they have some really fun programs but yeah. this year I don't know it's just like it's like it's it's like it's sucking the life. <laughs> Out yeah. Of, so here's yeah. yeah. Here's what I think. So I I really feel like they have generated unnecessary attention to themselves mm -hmm. by missing worlds last year. Okay. So last season they did amazingly on the Grand Prix series, qualify for the Grand Prix final, and they lost to DeHamel Radford, mm -hmm. but not massively. And it's not as though they had a horrible skate. They skated quite well, mm -hmm. but they didn't win. Then they had the unfortunate gaffe uh, on the, the the final Sao Cao. Uh, mainly the, the major mistake was in the final throw Sao Cao or missing it when he went down at the Europeans in the free skate. But mm -hmm. 
I don't, I don't think this was disastrous. I think if they had gone to Worlds, they probably would have won a very respectable silver medal. Um, or who knows, maybe more. I mean, you never know what, what, I what think might they, I think I think they would have and, had to fight to get silver, but they would have they would have definitely had a shot at the uh, podium. Well, we're going to disagree there, because I don't think Sui and Han are that untouchable or were at Worlds. But With a quad throw now, they might be. But but if if the, if Stobova and Klimov had skated clean up against Sui and Han, I personally would have given the edge to uh, Stobova and Klimov. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, they made the decision to skip worlds and focus more on training. So now I think they've they've generated all this intrigue and interest. Like, oh, who's you know this reinvented team? Let's see what they're all about or what have they got? And like, I didn't think that they had that many problems last year, and now they seem to have more problems this year. With you know, I mean, I respect the fact that they're trying to get you know the triple triple, uh, you know the triple toe triple toe combination triple toe triple toe double toe i think actually it is and if they can yes. land it that will be spectacular it'll be a first they've, time they've first time yeah, yeah. they've they've set up the program differently with the sow cow uh running in the first half of the program with quite a bit of setup and field moves which makes me wonder if it's going to be eventually a throw quadruple sow cow spoiler alert we'll see what happens there uh and it's early in the season so maybe things will change and she's cut her hair so yeah, you know she's and she's cut her hair. so maybe everything you know cut. maybe things will be coming up roses uh you know by the time uh russian nationals and europeans and worlds come around not sure but yeah no i agree with you Beth, that these programs to me <sighs> just aren't the vehicle now maybe they've chosen music that in the pro in the free skate is so sort of sleep inducing that it just is meant to calm them down and get them into their skates and get them into the ice so that they can land what they need to technically. But yeah, I'm not feeling it yet from this team, which is really unfortunate because I like them a lot. Yeah, I do really like this team. I think um, they have some really nice quality elements. Uh, and to be honest, like they didn't like their free skate wasn't entirely a disaster. Like they only had the major the fall. The problem was the actual program itself. It wasn't. It was lacking that spark that they normally have. Their component scores yeah. were 65 points, which is way below like their personal best even their personal best with in like sochi where every where somehow all the russians got like really high scores right i don't, I don't know how that happened but <laughs> um i mean granted they skated amazingly but still yeah. like that was that was like higher scoring but now they're getting like 65 points which is like when you had to hamill and radford and sui and han uh like at worlds last year like getting getting around 70 71 74 like that and of course Velocizar and Trankov like are definitely capable of getting yeah. in in the set. like they're they're gonna have their work cut out for hit them. I mean what I think this competition was was a wake up call for them that um they got beat by Asakova and Roganov and they got beat by Tarasova and Morozov. Tarasova and Mor Morozov, um they actually could have won silver if they hadn't like had an issue with their with their lift. Um, but also Asakova and Ro Roganov, they outskated Klimov and, uh, and Solbova in, in the free skate by like having a, like one of their best performances. I think it scored something like around 124, 125 points, which is a huge score yeah. for them. Yeah, um, and, and this is also where you wonder. So they, because Stobova and Klimov uh, didn't attend Worlds last year, that team took their spot and it might have given them, you know, they made, I believe they made the top 10. and. Yep. It, Probably has given them a boost. So Klimova and Stolbova and Klimov, Stolbova and Klimov, <laughs> Stolbova and Klingon, Stolbova and Klimov have now. They've almost, you know, their absence at Worlds has almost created more competition from them. Just of the set of teams that were they were up against last year, and we've got Velocizar and Trankov back in the mix. So it's it's. It's tough times uh, for I think Stolbova yeah. and Klimov, and of and course you have like Kavagudi and Smirnov as well, right? Like. Yeah. Oh. Right. Like it's 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 good. like Russian nationals uh, for for Paris is going to be a very very interesting event to watch. Um, I think everyone expects Volochstar and Trankov to easily take it, but then again, we saw like some issues in like Nemhorn. So some yeah. of the top pairs aren't really shining, and some of the like lesser pairs are are kind of winning segments away from them. So. I mean, I don't, I don't know if this is. It's definitely not um, indicative of like a power shift yet. But like these, like it's stuff like this that makes you kind of wonder, like, hey, is there going to be a changing of the guard when it comes to uh, like who's the top Russian pairs and who's like who's up and coming? Is is there going to be like a shift, right? Yeah. 
So uh, I think I think I, <laughs> it just makes it just makes you slam your keyboard, man. It makes me slam my keyboard and, and damn it, stop um, all my get your act together. And um, and speaking of our of our half Russian team, uh, I want to give a, a bit of a shout out to uh, Luba Vilushechkina and Dylan Moskovich, one of my favorite pairs. Like over, like a new pair. At, they're a new pair, but they're still one of my favorite pairs. I mean, uh, they uh, have I, they have I, a nice chemistry and a nice contrast to each other, and. They went for the quad flip throw. I mean, I yep. mean, she she fell yeah. on it, but it was fully rotated. And myth, he's rocking a boat neck like nobody's yeah. business. <laughs> it's, I've never seen as, him as before. only he can, right? <laughs> well, no, he hasn't been in the past. This is new. I'm liking this new softer, gentler side of Dylan Moskovich. Keep it up. Yeah, um, and I think their program was great. Um, they had, unfortunately, uh, they actually they had a personal best. Um, component score and a personal best technical score in their free skate but because they had a, a slight illegal grip in in their final lift they got like minus two deductions it was the stupidest deduction i've ever seen but like uh, but uh <laughs> but it was weird i'm like wait so you got personal best in both technical and components but you didn't get a personal best overall anyways <laughs> um yeah the system works in mysterious ways but hey uh that being said it was Let's just call it a personal best. I mean, that was a great showing for them. And to, and to bust out a quad flip, I mean, Duhamel and Radford could be the first throw quad Lutz, and um, Moskovich and Ilyushchkina could be the first throw quad flip. So Canada could go, like, one, two for, like, the hardest quad throws. I mean, I don't really foresee any throw quad axles <laughs> coming up anytime <laughs> soon. I mean, let's, let's, yeah. just, let's just keep bringing it down, down to earth, but... Hey, that that was a fun, that was a good attempt, and this was a good uh, competition for them to attempt that. And they need something that will um, technically kind of make them stand out. Yeah, so. I think she struggled on her side by side jump elements, mm -hmm. so the, they need to, which didn't seem to bother her last year. So that's something that they need to look at a bit more closely. But it is early in the season, and maybe that's something that uh, you know they'll master. But I think we talked about this in our earlier episodes that the Canadian national championships and the fight for uh, the world team by the Canadian pairs will be pretty intense. So, and speaking of which. Uh, we got uh, one of our early glimpses at uh, Duhamel and Radford at the Autumn Classic. Uh, okay, so they had a couple problems. I think she doubled the Lutz in the short program, and then uh, there was a problem on the landing of the quad sow cow in the free skate. She then popped the quad Lutz, which I've never seen her pop a throw before, which just goes to show that you know there might have been some real you know, second guessing after the, the botched sow cow landing, uh, heading into the quad Lutz. Uh, but they landed their, uh, pretty sure they landed the side by side triple Lutzes, mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. the free skate mm -hmm. and, uh, and also the side by side triple toe loop. So she was able to, to, you know, get things under control and, and ease back into the program, uh, after that. I love these programs. Like yeah. both, I feel like I'm totally showing a Canadian bias, but I'm pretty sure that if they had crappy programs, I'd be. Or ripping if they them weren't, apart. or if they weren't Canadian, like even so, like these, they're great vehicles for like. They're great yeah. programs. Like I think when we see, uh, you know, Moulin Rouge up against uh, Bollywood and Dracula up against Adele, it's. It's going to be great. Like I think, it, you know, there are strengths to to both programs of the, you know, Velosa Char and Trankov and Duhamel Radford, and and I can't wait. But I thought, you know, I, this the programs and the choreography to me show a continued softer side of Megan Duhamel. I think they show. I feel like Eric Radford could be an ice dancer. He oh, is yeah. so light on his feet, and he's so musical and artistic and expressive. Uh, for a male, for a male pair skater, he's very yeah. he's very artistic, and I think he he brings a lot to the table that that um, you don't really see from like uh, male figure skate uh, male pair skaters. So uh, it's it's really nice that they're both kind of they're really working on their chemistry and their connection. And that, that goes also for like complementing each other. And uh, I think this team with these programs, they're, they're, they will be very, very, very hard to beat this season. I love Sui and Han's programs as well. So that's going to be a fun head-to-head. Uh, -head. But Duhamel and Radford have done what they needed to do in this preseason, in their Quebec competition and in this one. They... Yep. Um, they 
got their programs out there. They got their legs under them. I don't know if they'll necessarily... Well, they'll probably go for the quad lots because they do say that it's as easy as doing a triple lots for them. Uh, I think in the pop or the single lots in this particular uh, instance was a comfort level thing being where Megan didn't have the greatest fall. And I mean, if you have a, if you have like that type of fall on the quad side, which, you know, often she'll have a pretty good landing of like she doesn't yeah. often fall. Um, yeah. uh Going into a quad lot like yeah. that mentally, mentally it's new territory. Mentally, mentally, you need to be like, okay, like we got, we gotta, we gotta cut the brakes on this. But like, and they probably talk to each other going into it, being like, you know what, let's just not hurt ourselves over getting this quad lots now. Especially when, like, I don't think it would count as like a world record if it's the Skate Canada Autumn Classic. I think it needs to be like a like a senior B or um, or like yeah. a Grand Prix or Worlds or a major event. Uh, an yep. ISU championship, um, but uh, it's still great, good on them for like even going for it. And uh, as we've seen from their practices, they can definitely they are capable of landing both quads back to back. But they also landed their uh, their side by side elements. Yep. Pick up on the like a double lots in the short program, which we don't see from them very often either. But a it's good to get the stuff out of the way and totally. uh, and they still like scored like a massive score in their free skate and yeah. uh, if you compare that to like what some of the other teams are doing in the preseason De Hamel and Radford are still very much uh, the favorites and yeah. so we're looking forward to seeing them uh, hopefully continue their streak and kind of build uh, their technical repertoire and uh, establish themselves or continue to establish themselves as favorites. They are for established. The 20, yeah, they are. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, winning a world championship kind of does, kind of establishes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. good for them, and we look forward to seeing what they have in the future. Yep. And she's rocking flawless hair, and I'm loving Always. his beard. I know Always, it's not yeah. important, but <laughs> it's important to hey, me. It's a look. So, it's a look. It's a look. Totally. Transitioning now to ice dance and talking about the nice. couples in the ice dance competition, because mm-hmm. uh, the season's long, but our time uh, is limited in these episodes. So we'll talk first about uh, Andres Napala. Yep. Interesting sort of uh, talk about a power shift uh, myth. The Shibutanis from the U.S. were there. Uh, the Brits were there, mm-hmm. and the Canadians were uh, Gillies and Poirier, yeah. uh, Gillis Poirier were there. Uh, the Shibutanis were leading after the short dance, so it was looking as though sort of the, the old rankings were going to the stand or the old standings were going to hold mm-hmm. true. And then in the free skate, things switched up quite a bit, and uh, and Gillies and Poirier uh, came out on top, which is really quite interesting. You don't, you know, in ice dance, even now with the new judging system, you don't tend to see some of those, uh, you know, some of those changes and shifts uh, very often. Mm-hmm. In terms of the, the gold medalists, um, Gillies and Poirier have pretty unique programs, both in the short dance and the free skate. Uh, I was really impressed with their short dance. Uh, I thought it was colorful, fun, uh, incorporating the Beatles, uh, a real different take on the on the uh, the the waltz. What did you think? Uh, I thought these were also great programs for them. They were very sharp in their execution. Um, their short dance, they uh, they were hitting their levels. That's, this was a, a, a main issue with the Shibutanis, uh, but like spe- particularly in the free dance, uh, and that's what allowed um, Gillis and Poirier to actually surpass them. And Coombs and Buckling, good on them. Like they're coming back after that unfortunate uh, fall at like well multiple errors. Oh. At, <laughs> uh, that was not a pretty Grand Prix final for them, and I'm. Or sorry, not Grand Prix final. Not I think final. it was it NHK. was it was NHK. NHK, and they were slated to make it to the Grand Prix final like easily, oh. and and disaster happened. So they're regrouping this season, and uh, I think I really I really like the Brits programs as well. I know they kept the, uh, the program from. To- yeah, they've hung on to their free dance, which I think an ice dance is such a curious decision. True, but they also didn't really get to like. Um, show it off as much as they wanted to last year. I don't think they went to Euros last year, and obviously um, they didn't go to Worlds. Uh, so it was it was a bit of a tumultuous second half of the season for Coombs and Buckland. But not, like now they're back, and they're um, th- this was a good competition for them. Except I think they would have liked to um, beat Gillis and Poirier. This was a great competition for Gillis and Poirier. It was very consistent. Oh, yeah. Their their programs looked very 
like very clean and very um, finessed at this point in the season compared to like, you know, how we've seen in the past. Normally they're not as prepared, but um, right now, like I think they're they're looking to solidly like they can't catch up to Weaver and Poje, obviously, who we'll talk about in a bit. But um, they can still catch up to some of the other teams like the Shibutanis. I think that was a big win from for them over the over. Uh, uh, the Shibutanis, and unfortunately, the Shibutanis need to like get their act together because they were they're trying to like uh, close in on Chalk and Bates, and they had a really good shot last year um, at the Grand Prix final. I actually thought they should have been ahead of Chalk and Bates uh, after the short dance at the Grand Prix final, but she uh, fell, I believe, didn't she? Yeah, and again, like judges, like seriously, like <laughs> how many times are people allowed to make errors before you yeah. actually like start like calling them out on it? Yeah. Anyways. That aside, um, the Shibutanis, they really needed to make a, more of a splash here. And coming third was not a good way uh, to start off. But, hey, there's a lot of season left. And I think Gillis and Poirier are, are looking to take this momentum into their, their Grand Prix season. And Coombs and Buckland as well in their comeback season as well. So that should be very exciting to watch. And as you said, like this, is a, this was a crazy competition where yep. the teams that were 1-2-3... After the short dance, we're like one, like three, two, one. Like it, it yeah. kind of flip. Like that doesn't really. Sure it, it That doesn't normally happen in ice dance, but it just goes to show if you get the levels and if you get the technical difficulty, the judges will uh, reward you. And especially in ice dance, that can make the difference between like a gold and a bronze. Well, and it might be as well in this case. You know, there wasn't a major world medalist uh, in the mix. Shibutani's won, I think bronze way back in 2011 that, there wasn't true. there wasn't a real major player in the mix and perhaps if there had been you wouldn't have seen that movement but uh, we did get to see it I, i'm excited to see uh, gillies and poirier unfold over the course of the season their free skate in terms of the music choice might take a little bit to warm up on me but they've got some unbelievable moments in that program they they do an ice dance uh, a dance sit spin where yeah, she comes right that. off the ice which i think is fantastic yeah, it's um, very original, and i very think creative. yeah i think I think they're going to give competition to, uh, uh, to and this is my attempt at a segue, they're going to give competition to the winners of the fin Finlandia Trophy, uh, Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poge. Uh, so Andrew, unfortunately, in the short dance and the free dance, really uh, struggled with the twizzles. Uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know what's gone. It might have been just a fluke in the short dance that then sort of plagued him and made him second guess the twizzles in the free dance as well. Uh, but you have to wonder, you know, it's sort of similar to like the quad, the, the quad in a, in a men's uh, program where if you botch the twizzle, does do the judges then are they then really looking closely and sharpening their pencils in terms of assessing the levels on some of the other uh, technical elements of the program? You just wonder. Uh, that was, it was anyways. It was unfortunate about the twizzles. You wonder how much it affected the rest of the program. Their short dance was to Elvis. Uh, mm. What do you think, Myth? Um, I really liked their short dance last year. That passionate Paso Doble. This mm. Elvis short dance, I mean, it, the Ravensburger Waltz is so weird this year because, like, as we had talked about previously, like, all these teams are just finding their own interpretations. You have, like, an Elvis that Weaver and Poggi are, and, are doing, and you have, like, a Dark Eyes Gypsy uh, number that, like, Chalk and Bates are doing. So the contrast is, like, so evident, and that's not something you see in Ice Dance. Normally, the original dance or short dance, like, you can still kind of create some sort of comparison and not just because yeah. of the compulsory sequence that's in all of them. But yep. um, I, th I mean, I think it's a, a different side of Weaver and Poggi that we haven't seen before. Again, another Elvis medley. Another Elvis medley. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> a messy Elvis medley. Yeah. Talking. Yeah. Well, again, it's early on in the season and it's not like Chalk and Bates had a great Neville Horn trophy uh, competition either. Um, like, I mean, their short dance was great, but their free dance wasn't uh, perfect either. So it's, yeah. I, it's, it's funny because you see certain, certain teams on the rise and who's really coming prepared this season, like uh, Gillis and Poirier uh, at Andres Nepala. And then Weaver and Poje, they, they were obviously going to win this competition. I mean, kudos, yeah. kudos to um, the Israeli team um, of... Uh, um, oh my Tobias. God. Tobias and... Tobias. Yeah, Tobias, Tobias and... Uh, Tkachenko? Chachenko. Yep. Chachenko. I'm going to say it's Chachenko. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to agree with you. Former Lithuanian, former Russian, now representing Israel, because bam, that's what happens. That's, that's what you do. It's that's what dance. you do. And I, 
Yeah. If your federation lets you go, <coughs> Bruno Musso. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello. Didier, let him go. Didier, let him go. Um, then you can definitely like form, form other teams. But um, good for them for being like the first Israeli uh, pair, uh, Ice Dance Duo since Chayden Signofsky uh, from years and years and years ago to like actually win a major medal at um, like at a Challenger Series event. And of course, there's uh, the the Danish team of Boudry and Sorensen, who I just want to give a quick shout out to because, to my knowledge, um, the Danes have never uh, won international medals. May, I, I think outside of the Junior Grand Prix circuit. Okay, I, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, if you guys know of somebody, please comment on it. But uh, hey, kudos to them for getting a mm. uh, a bronze medal for Denmark. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you don't see you don't see that very often. You don't see that very often. So so that was also nice to see. Uh, but back to Weaver and Poje. This is. This is not the it greatest was, start. Well, I think, but... Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the best start. I think, in, I mean, in fairness, Chalk and Bates had a couple hiccups as well in their uh, debut in Neville Horn. And so perhaps when you are a top ice dance team, when there's so much intrigue and what are your vehicles going to be this year to try and uh, move up in the rankings, there's a lot more pressure on a Weaver and Poge than there is on uh, Gillies and Poirier. Uh, I think that their free dance might take a bit uh, to, for me to warm up to. Uh, in terms of the the uh, uh, the content of it, uh, or the mood to it, rather. But I do like, I mean, there are some programs, I liked their four seasons last year. I think that sometimes she can really go over the top in terms of her expression. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, he's not, sense. well, but sometimes it did. I mean, some people can pull it off, like, uh, and some people struggle with it. And I think, uh, I think this program helps to sort of contain the emotion a little bit, which I think can be helpful. It's interesting as well. I mean, similar to Chalk and Bates coming off last season when the French won with a very sort of romantic, soft, introspective program. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's taking that cue. Well, not everyone, but the top teams are are taking that cue and and they're following uh, following along with something that's softer, more romantic, and introspective. So. We'll see. You know what? I'm loving that because it basically it's forcing skaters to like skate. Like it's 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 saying that you can't hide behind all these histrionics and dramatics and stuff that like you know ice dancing has been classically known for. Um, yep. It's saying it's saying that hey, you have to like um, nail these elements. You have to get your levels. You need to show that you you have to like hit every edge in every sequence. Otherwise, the level of the sequence drops, and that's and in ice dance, that's so critical because, like, uh, their level in in ice dance levels are like are like two points apart and one one and two point apart. Like, it's not like yep. in singles where like a sit spin level one and a level four is like a point and a half, right? And then you have like point three, point five, like increments. Like in yeah. ice dance, it's really important to to nail your levels. And um, as we saw with the Shibutani's, it can really uh, be detrimental if you don't do that. So Weaver and Poje, they did a uh, they did an okay job of it, of course. Like with the Twizzles, that that dropped the level in both programs. Yep. Um, but uh, you know, there's still a lot of season left. I think right now, Chalk and Bates probably have a little bit more momentum, but that can definitely change depending on like their head to head. And um, I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to take bets now because even last year, going into Worlds, you know, you never know what's going to happen when. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so I, I so I sense is actually like pretty exciting right now because normally it's the most like boringly predictable event, and now it's actually like, hey, like teams depending on how they perform might actually do better. Imagine that yep. as a concept, <laughs> like right. So yeah, yeah. With virtue and with virtue and Moyer and uh, Davis and White away from the sport, it's interesting to see now. You know what's the new world order look like, and what will it look like if they should, you know, they should step back onto uh, onto the ice. So that really concludes, I think, myth our our summary of uh, the 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 Nebelhorn or Andres Napala and uh, uh, Finlandia Trophy and the Autumn Classic. You can see I'm just not equipped mm -hmm. to to summarize or bundle three events and congratulations episode. orford and williams on winning the autumn classic we will talk about you guys later this season but lots know, of season left absolutely. oh there's a lot of season left and we're we're just continually rambling and you guys uh 
there's a lot more YouTube to watch, so. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And speaking of YouTube as well, uh, we're delighted that we've hit 50,000 views of our content uh, in the spirit of pairs and ice dance, or pairs anyways. Watch this space for an upcoming interview with Aliona Savchenko and Bruno Masso of Germany, who we really hope to see in the competitive scene very soon. And that's, and a, that's a fun interview. Like, those guys are a barrel. As, Bruno Masso is, like, totally, totally a character. So It's a you, whole you, different... It's you a whole different see side one. of Aliona Semchenko than I've ever seen with, yeah. you know, Robin Solkovi was, you know, pretty stern, pretty severe kind of guy. And uh, Bruno Masso has a very different personality, yeah. which is really quite, which is really quite fun. So uh, follow us on Twitter, like, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We uh, love to continue to pump out uh, uh, our analysis uh, for you. Please comment, uh, you know, play with us when you can, agree, disagree, uh, offer your suggestions. We love it. And thanks so much for watching. All righty. Until next time, these are the Blade Boys signing off.